My name is Yvonne and today we are going to be making 11 Madison Park granola. For those of you who have not had the opportunity to go to 11 Madison Park here in New York City, it's one of the city's top rated restaurants, uh, not just for its cuisine but also for the overall experience of dining. Um, so one of the greatest things about eating there is that at the end of your meal when you think that it's all done, as you exit the restaurant, they thank you for visiting and for dining with them. And then on top of that, they send you out with a nice little mason jar of their own homemade granola. It's apparently a recipe that Daniel Hum, who is the owner of Eleven Madison Park, he actually grew up with when he was growing up in Europe. So we're going to get started with some of the uh, ingredients that are used to make this granola. Um, some of these things are additions that I have added just because I had them on hand and I thought that they would add some additional flavors as well as uh, some additional nutritional value. But the core ingredients are going to be uh, two and three quarters cup of rolled oats, about one cup of shredded coconut chips, one cup of shelled pistachios, third a cup of pumpkin seeds, three quarters of a cup of sour cherries. These are actually a bit large, so before you throw them into your granola at the very end, I suggest that you either chop them up or just snip them in half with a pair of scissors. Then we are also going to have, as the liquids, about third of a cup of maple syrup, third of a cup of extra virgin olive oil, about half of a cup of brown sugar as an additional sweetener. This is about one and a half teaspoons of sea salt. Try to find the coarsest ground sea salt that you can find. And then these three ingredients are going to be the ones that are not traditionally in the recipe but I've added for nutritional value as well as um, additional flavors. So this is about a third of a cup of chopped toasted macadamia nuts one and a half tablespoons of chia seeds, and then two tablespoons of ground flaxseed. So we're going to take our rolled oats, dump them in, coconut chips, pistachio nuts, pumpkin seeds, oh whoops, Things are a bit oily after toasting them. Then our macadamia nuts, chia seed, and our flax seed ground up. We are going to leave these sour cherries to the end so that we are mixing them up with the granola after the granola is out of the oven. So I'm going to take this, mix it up with a big spoon. Make sure it's all nice and mixed up, incorporated. All right, so now we are going to be mixing the maple syrup, the brown sugar, and the extra virgin olive oil together. The idea is we want to heat them up over the stove to get them nice and warm to dissolve the brown sugar. And then when it's nice and warm, we're going to mix it up with the dry ingredients that we just put together in the mixing bowl, and then incorporate everything, and then put it into the oven. So. You're going to start with our maple syrup, a third of a cup. Make sure you get all of that in. Maple syrup is not cheap, so you want to get every last drop of that. And then, a third of a cup of extra virgin olive oil, nice and peppery and fruity. Take all of that. And then, our half cup of brown sugar. Now I'm going to turn on the heat, put it on medium. I'm going to mix it up. Okay, so this is pretty much done. I'm going to turn off the heat now. Let it cool down just a little before you pour it into your dry ingredients. Now I'm going to mix it up. Want to make sure to incorporate it so that 
this thick syrup is covering every last bit of this dried mixture. Lay it onto my baking sheet. So I've got my baking sheet here. If you don't have a sill pat, this is a silicone mat to keep your pan cleaner and to make cleanup easier. You can also just line this with foil. It's really easy. And take this granola, just lay it out. Use every last bit of surface on your baking sheet. It's okay if it's not completely flattened because it'll just mean that you'll have larger chunks of granola later. I actually like the big chunky bits more than the thinned out pieces. And we're gonna stick it in the oven. I've already preheated the oven for 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes. So we're gonna take the granola out and we'll see what it looks like. Ugh. Nice and toasty. Don't forget your sour cherries. This is gonna be like the final element that we're adding to this granola until it's complete. I'm just gonna take this, just kinda toss it in. I'm just gonna mix it and incorporate all of this up. And so we're gonna scoop them into jars for storage. Now you can eat granola however you'd like. Some people will literally just eat them by the handful. You can add it into your granola on top of your smoothie bowls. Just yes, scooping them in to these nice big mason jars. So I'm going to do another taste test with the sour cherries this time. That's a bit of a sour element to this. So I'm just going to grab a piece, these big chunks, and maybe a couple of sour cherries. Mmm. Before, it was sweet and salty. It had a nice balance. And this time with the sour cherries, there's a nice well-rounded, sweet, sour, salty edge to it. It's really tasty. You should definitely try making it at home. Thanks for watching.